All right, we'll go ahead and get started here. Recording in progress. We're on the record in case 24 CRI 237, caption State of Ohio versus Angelina Williams. We're here for purposes of a bond setting on a complaint that was filed earlier today. The defendant is present and we're conducting this hearing by video, appearing on behalf of the State of Ohio's prosecuting attorney, Christopher Tunnell. Uh, Ms. Williams, do you have any objection to the court conducting this hearing by video? No, Your Honor. Did you get a copy of the complaint that was filed? Yes, Your Honor. The court has to go over that with you. There's two counts in it. Count one is endangering children, a felony of the second degree. That reads on or about August 17th, 2024 in Ashland County, Ohio, Angelina Williams did administer corporal punishment or other physical disciplinary measure or physically restrain the child in a cruel manner or for a prolonged period, which punishment, discipline, or restraint was excessive under the circumstances and created a substantial risk of serious physical harm to DM, date of birth 11-4-2017, a child under eight, 18 years of age, date of birth 11 for 2017 in violation of Ohio Revised Code section 2919.22b3, 2919.22e3, endangering children of felony of the second degree. And it reads, furthermore, the violation resulted in serious physical harm to DM 114 of 2017. Do you understand what the state is alleging in count one? Yes, your honor. Count two is obstructing justice. That's a felony of the fifth degree. It reads on or about August 17th, 2024 in Ashton County, Ohio, Angelina Williams did with purpose to hinder the discovery, apprehension, prosecution, conviction, or punishment of another for a crime or to assist another to benefit from the commission of a crime, communicate false information to any person in violation of revised code 2921-32A5, 2921-32C3, obstructing justice, a felony of the fifth degree. And it reads, furthermore, and the crime committed or alleged to have been committed by the person aided was tampering with evidence, uh, revised code 2921-12A1 and 2921-12B, a felony of the third degree, a felony. Um, do you understand what they're alleging in count two? Yes, ma'am. You have certain rights in this matter. First, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say during the course of the hearing could be used against you at future hearings. You have the right to have an attorney, and you have the right to a court-appointed attorney if you cannot afford to hire one, and if you qualify. There is a $25 fee for court-appointed counsel. You also have the right to have a preliminary hearing, which is the probable cause hearing, since you're charged by complaint. And you have the right to have a jury trial and to have the state prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt to all 12 jurors as to the charges. Do you understand those rights as I've explained them to you? Yes, Your Honor. Did you want to be represented by an attorney? Yes, Your Honor. Can you afford to hire one or you want me to consider you for court-appointed counsel? Uh, court-appointed. Right. All right, I have a few questions for you on your finances to see if you qualify. Uh, first of all, what's your date of birth? 8-11-96. And uh, your address. I just moved 23 Chapel. Okay. I've just moved uh, Savannah, Ohio. And do you have phone number? Okay. And the last four of your social. Um, who else lives with you at that address? My uncle. Okay. The Mr. Mahalski? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Anybody else? Uh, no, it's just us. Okay. Are you receiving any benefits right now, like Ohio Works First, SSI, SSD, Medicaid, food stamps? I get food stamps through Cuyahoga. I, have yet, I haven't got to move nothing yet. Okay. <laughs> um, do you have any checking savings or money market account? Yes, I have checking and savings. Okay. Can you tell me the approximate balance? Uh, I got about 700 in savings and uh, I got maybe 20 in checking. Do you have any stocks, bonds, or CDs? No. 
Any other liquid assets or cash on hand? No. But you do qualify for court appointed counsel. Oh. Court's going to appoint attorney Rolf Whitney to represent you. Um, we'll let him know he's been appointed and he'll be here at the next hearing for you. We are going to address the matter of bond today then. Attorney Tanel, the state's position on bond. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, the court should be advised that this defendant uh, based, and these, these facts are based on what law enforcement can glean thus far uh, in what is an ongoing investigation. Uh, it appears this defendant um, moved or came to stay uh, at the residence in Savannah from Cleveland. Uh, she has in tow both of her children um, a six-year-old boy who's the listed victim and his sister who is roughly similar in age. Um, she does not have custody of her children, uh, allegedly stemming from a Cuyahoga County CPS matter. Uh, there is a guardian, however, for those children, uh, and it appears that she had the children uh, recently uh, on visitation um, that is pursuant to a court order. Um, so she's been in Savannah with the with the children for a week or two prior to Saturday, uh, the seventeenth. While at the residence in Savannah, um, this uh, defendant has been utilizing uh, handcuffs uh, and rope uh, as a form of discipline for both children. Uh, in fact, photographs uh, have been located of both children uh, bound in that manner uh, on her phone. On this particular occasion, on Saturday, uh, there was a disagreement uh, when the child uh, refused or stopped or objected to picking up dog excrement uh, behind the house. Uh, this defendant and uh, the co-defendants um, handcuffed him, both hands, and then applied a second set of cuffs to his feet. And we're in the process of using a rope uh, to try to tie him to a chair. When he came off the chair uh, and while on the ground uh, was attacked by a pit bull that resided in the residence. Uh, the dog uh, bit the child and, and essentially held the child's neck, uh, causing severe uh, and serious lacerations to the child's neck. Uh, significant amount of bleeding was involved in that. Um, some of the adults present uh, applied pressure after removing the dog uh, and left the residence with the child to meet uh, the first responders uh, in an effort to get aid. Um, and then the owner of the dog took the dog uh, and uh, left the residence so that the dog situation would not be found. When first responders made it over to the house to interview uh, this defendant, uh, this defendant has then and consistently since uh, lied about events, um, what occurred and engaged in misdirection to investigators uh, both as to the dog and her own uh, actions and culpability. Um, this defendant does have uh, a little bit of prior criminal history. She was adjudicated delinquent in 2012 out of Cuyahoga County uh, for felony assault. And in 2016, had a domestic violence charge pled down to disorderly conduct in the Garfield Heights Municipal Court. In addition to the state's, or the court's rather, standard conditions, uh, we'd ask that there be no contact between this defendant uh, and any co-defendants, uh, the listed victim, uh, the sister of the victim, or their custodian. Uh, 
and the state would request um, a cash bond in the amount of $300,000. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, if there's anything you would like to say just regarding what the court's going to order for bond, you may. I'll just remind you, you don't have to because you have the right to remain silent. See so if you want to talk to Attorney Whitney before you say anything, that's fine. Is there anything you would like to say today regarding what the court should set for bond? Mom, I don't really understand what that means. Um, what does that mean? Does that mean I can't pay a certain amount or like? The court is setting bond and the court could set a monetary amount that you would have to post prior to being released from the jail. So uh, Attorney Tanel has just stated what the state's position is regarding what bond should be. So if you would like to state what you think bond should be, you may, but you don't have to. If you want to talk to Attorney Whitney about it first, like I said, that's fine because you don't have to say anything. I, f I, f I feel like that's high. I feel like I, the dog's not even my dog's. The cuffs aren't even my cuffs. I didn't even know that the, the cuffs were illegal or anything was wrong with it. Um, <laughs> my uncle told me that <laughs> it was okay. And I never meant any harm. I really didn't. Okay, okay thank you, ma'am. Is, is there, what would I, so I don't have, so I guess I, will, I would request to pay 10% of that to bond out. Okay. The court will allow. Okay. All right, thank you, ma'am. The court's going to order a bond as follows. Um, to be released, you'll have to post two bonds. The first is a personal recognizance bond. That's just your written promise with the court to appear at all future hearings in the case. If you fail to appear, you could be charged with a separate felony offense for failing to appear. The second would be a surety bond, a bond secured by real estate or securities or the deposit of cash in the amount of $300,000. Conditions of bond are that you not leave the state of Ohio without obtaining written permission from the court, appear at all future hearings in the case, and keep the court informed of your current address and telephone number at all times, that you follow and obey all laws of the state of Ohio and order to the court, that you not use, consume, or possess any drugs of abuse or alcohol and be subject to random drug and alcohol testing, cannot use any product containing THC while you're on bond, after you post bond, you need to report to the court's bailiffs. Their office is located across from the clerk of courts. So they'll enroll you in the court's drug testing and bond program. Court's also going to order that you have no contact uh, with the alleged victim in this case, as well as his sister or their custodian slash guardian. That you have no contact with any of the co-defendants, which are Robert Mahalski and uh, Taylor Desiree Marvin Brown. Court's going to order that you have no contact uh, with any minor during the course of the case. Do you have any questions about the conditions of bond, ma'am? No. Uh, yeah. I don't understand. So I have to put up $300,000 to bond out? That's correct, ma'am. There's no way to let me pay some? Not at this point, ma'am. And we'll give you a chance to talk to your attorney. We're going to set a hearing on Friday for your for that. And we'll give you a chance to talk to him. At nine, nine fifteen, nine thirty. That work, attorney to know. It does, Your Honor. Okay, so we're going to set this for a hearing then on Friday, this Friday, August twenty third at nine thirty a.m. If you do bond out, come to the courthouse. If you don't bond out, then we'll have you by video video again. Will we give you a chance to talk to your attorney privately before we get started? Okay. Anything further today, Attorney Snow? No, ma'am. Right, thank you. We're adjourned. Thank you. Recording stopped.